From the dawn of the Industrial Revolution to sometime in the late 1970s, Britain was the workshop of the world. For the people of Manchester, employed in cushy jobs, mills and factories, where there was work for mum, dad and even the kids, Back to work. it must have seemed like the good times would never end. But then, China happened. Nowadays, the boys from Beijing manufacture everything from knockoff pistols to dildos, and that's hit Britain hard. So when the UK's manufacturing sector collapsed like a warm Easter egg, where did all the workers go? Well, today, over a million of them are employed in one of these. It's called a supermarket. It's much more than a place to buy cheese, chops, chocks and cheap chicken and chicory and chives. Hello, Alan Partridge, you must be Paul. Uh, it's, it's David. Right. This excellent. was store manager really David Paul. Place. It really is like an enormous cathedral, isn't it? Where, where people come to worship shampoo and grapes. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you don't own the store, do you? Uh, no, I'm the manager. The manager, of course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love the hot flush from the uh, warm air curtain on entry. David had agreed to let me do a shift in store to experience firsthand what it was like to work on the front line of modern retail. You checked your eggs. Yeah, just a bit of chicken shit, but we all follow through now and again, don't we? Men may take all the top jobs in driving and science, but across the UK, women dominate nearly all forms of till-based employment. But could I, as a man, pass muster or scan mustard? My wife left me for a fitness instructor. Morning. Morning. Do you want to pop your things on the uh, conveyor? Don't worry about that, we're just making a documentary. Do you want to pop your things on the conveyor belt? No, not the basket, just the items. Oh, well, don't, don't put them on the floor, because you have to keep bending down to pick them up. So just, just pop them back at the end. That's all right. Yeah, but not on the conveyor, at the very end. OK. Should we scan your items? OK. Yeah, well, no, don't bring them to me. Um, I, I, I move them forward like this. And so just so put the beans back. No, not in the basket. Not in the basket. No, don't bring them to me. Just put them on the conveyor. No, back at the end. No, not in the basket. Put the beans down on the conveyor belt. Now, get off. No, down, leave the beans alone. Not in the basket, on the conveyor belt. Alan. She's not listening to me. What are you doing? But as my shift on the tills wore on, I realised something extraordinary. I was absolutely brilliant at scanning. The female side of my brain, long dormant, had somehow been re-triggered. Some said I was scanning even quicker than Tesco lifer Pat Bevin. Pat could barely conceal her rage. It's 24.40, please, love. Take your time. Take your time. Have a very relaxing weekend. You've got some nice ingredients there. You go careful there now, my love. You all right packing? By entering a form of hyper-concentration, I'd achieved the holy grail of being able to chat and scan an almost zen-like state that would give the Dalai Lama a run for its money. You're right, packing. They call the bags for life, don't they? But uh, I must have two dozen of them in the boots of the car. Looking for self-raising flour. Al four, Chuck. They should call the bags for the drive home. Al, price on Tetley's pack of 40. Every time I get to the uh, checkout, I'm like, ah, oh, where's me, uh, where's me bags for life? I heard you were always going out with an old bag. Chance would be a fine thing. What aisle was the flour? Aisle four. 119 for the Tetley. Thanks, Al. That's 1690. You go careful there now, my love. You're right, packing. These ladies enter this state each and every day, displaying the kind of physical and mental dexterity we normally associate with fighter pilots. Check out, women. The people of Britain salute you. Well, after some initial doubts, I'm impressed with the working conditions here. The store itself is clean and well ventilated, and there seems little chance of workers succumbing to the kind of chronic lung conditions that blighted the mining communities and made their snot black. All in all, Tesco's are just better than local shops. But there was one employee who really stuck with me. There was a quiet dignity to this man. Without him, the entire car park would look like a drained canal. And watching him work over the gentle clank of his giant trolley train made me wonder, who was he? Where was he from? What were his dreams? What were his fears? What was his name? Of course, I'd never know. All right, go round, stupid woman. I later found out his name was Carl, because there are hundreds of Carls, not just in supermarkets, 
but quick fits, HSS tool hires, Greggs. Carls are the backbone of Britain. Carls won us the war. Carls keep us safe, clothed, tool hired, Greggsed. Carls. 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 Alan Partridge says that I'll 